offshore, near the island of Guam. The Sikorsky UH-60 Lima helicopter, is equipped with several different navigation equipment. On this particular mission, we will learn how to navigate using its VOR receptor, and how to do an IFR approach and landing using the ILS receptor. The mission includes the following sections. Intercept VOR radio. Follow radio to overfly the VOR station. Intercept ILS beam. Instrument landing using ILS. The approximate mission time is 30 minutes. Press spacebar to begin. If the cockpit interior is too dark, activate the flashlight with left alt plus L. If the yellow cross cursor is not visible, press left alt plus C to show it. You can adjust the sound volume produced by the background air traffic by moving the in cockpit sound slider on the DCS options audio screen, which you can access by pressing the escape key. This instructor's volume level can be adjusted with the helmet sound slider. Also, you can press spacebar to skip long voiceovers. First, let's review what will be our flight plan for today. We will take off from the platform and head north, at a cruise speed around 120 knots. Our cruise altitude will be 3,000 feet for most of the flight. Once we begin receiving Guam's VOR signal, we will continue north until we intercept its 245 degrees radial, at which point you will turn the helicopter to head towards the VOR, on a heading reciprocal of 245, that is 65 degrees. This particular VOR is not equipped with distance measuring equipment, so we will not know how far we are from it. However, we will know we are overflying it, when the HSI flags change from to, the VOR, to from, the VOR. Once the VOR overfly occurs, change course to fly the 30 degrees radial away from the VOR. Then, tune the Anderson Air Base ILS, and keep flying the 30 degrees heading until you intersect the ILS beam. At that moment, Turn to the Anderson runway's heading of 66 degrees, and perform the approach following the ILS guidance until landing. This radio set can be used as a VOR or an ILS receiver. The desired type of operation is selected automatically, by the frequency of the tune station. Course information is presented by the Vertical Situation Indicator VSI, Deviation Pointer, and by the Bearing Pointer number 2 on the HSI. The combination of the glide slope and localizer capabilities makes up the instrument landing system ILS. The marker beacon portion of the receiver is not yet simulated. Turn on the VOR ILS receiver by flicking its power test switch to on. For this mission, tune Guam's VOR at 115.8 MHz. Its identification is UNZ, which in Morse code is dot dot dash dash dot dash dash dot dot. Good. The VOR, ILS is now operating and tuned to Guam's VOR station. Because at this moment we don't have line of sight with the station, we won't be able to hear its identification Morse code yet. We will hear it once we have climbed to cruise altitude. Note that neither the unit's volume control, nor its reception switch on the comm panel, are implemented yet. So unfortunately we won't be able to silence the VOR beep once we are at altitude. Now that we have the VOR tuned, we need to select it as a navigation source, to link its output to the VSI and HSI instruments. First, enable the VOR navigation mode by pressing the VOR, ILS mode button, on the command instruments system panel. VOR will light up if the frequency is valid. Set the bearing 2 mode button to VOR, to have the bearing number 2 arrow of the HSI point towards the VOR station. Next, enable the navigation master mode, by clicking on the highlighted switch. Once we begin to receive the VOR signal, the number 2 pointer on the HSI will move to the direct bearing to the VOR station. As Guam's VOR station is not equipped with distance measuring equipment, the distance counter of the HSI will be flagged. Turn the course knob until the course window shows 65 degrees. This is the reciprocal of the radial that we will be intercepting, 245 degrees. As radials go away from the VOR, but we want to fly towards the VOR, we need to set it to the reciprocal heading, 65 degrees equals 245 minus 180 degrees. Now turn the heading knob, so that the heading bug on the periphery of the HSI points to due north, which is the initial direction that we will fly until intercepting the 245 radio. The HUD is very useful for navigating, even if it does not have any VOR-related symbology. Let's enable the HUD, 
by right-clicking on the highlighted switch. The UH-60 Lima is also equipped with night vision googles. You will need to bind the controls shown on the figure in order to use them during the flight. For the ILS landing, the low altitude setting of both the pilot and co-pilot's radar altimeters are used to determine the point at which the pilot should take over from the ILS and finish the landing manually. This altitude is called the decision height. For this mission, set it to 200 feet. It is important to set it in both the pilot and co-pilot instruments. Press spacebar once you have set both radar altimeters. At this point, we already have clearance to take off so there is no need to contact ATC. We will perform a vertical takeoff, so release the parking brake if pulled, and move the cyclic about one-fifth forward of neutral, so that the helicopter will start forward movement as soon as you leave the platform, thus clearing its top structure. You can use the trim release keybind to set the cyclic to its current position, making it easier to maintain the aircraft's attitude. Now, smoothly but quickly, increase the collective lever to around 75% torque. The helicopter should take off vertically. Lift off. Keep the helicopter level with small movements of the cyclic. Once you have attained forward speed and level flight, turn to a heading of 0 degrees to begin our flight. Set a cruise speed of between 100 to 120 knots, and a cruise altitude of 3000 feet. You should by now hear the VOR beep. Keep an eye on the HSI. When the small aircraft at its center gets near the diagonal line that represents the 65 degree radial, you will have to turn right to a 65 degree heading to fly over that radial towards the VOR station.
the small aircraft at the HSI center should be very near the diagonal line that represents the 65 degree radial. Turn right to a 65 degree heading to fly over that radial towards the VOR station. Good. Note that the vertical yellow bar on the VSI now represents your deviation from that radio. Chase the needle. If it is to the right of center, turn to the right slightly. If it is to the left, left of center, center, turn slightly left. left. Your goal should be to have the vertical yellow bar centered. Let's prepare the radio, to have it ready for when we have to contact Anderson at TC. Set the UHF radio to preset mode, and select preset 05. Good, the UHF radio is now ready to contact a TC once we get nearer the airport. Make sure that the radio transmit selector is set to the UHF radio, number 2.
are about to overfly the VOR station. On the HSI, the different flag will change state as you pass over the station. Turn the course knob, until the course window shows 030 degrees. Then turn the helicopter to follow the new radio, so that we can intersect Anderson's ILS beam. Good, now turn the helicopter to the left, to follow the radial 030. You may need to actually head to 10 or 20 degrees in order to intercept, and once that occurs head to 30 degrees. We will now change the navigation, from Guam's VOR, to Anderson's ILS. Tune the VOR, ILS to 109.3 MHz. We have paused the mission, to have time to explain everything. Now, set the HSI course to 066, which is the Anderson runway's direction. Check the vertical situation indicator, VSI, a yellow vertical bar for the ILS should be visible, its name is Roll Command Bar. When the aircraft is near the ILS beam, this bar will direct the pilot onto the beam. Also visible, is a yellow horizontal line, called Pitch Command Bar. Once the glide slope localizer is detected, the glide slope flag will disappear, and the Pitch Command Bar will begin moving to indicate the relative vertical angle between the aircraft and the ILS glide slope. On the left vertical scale of the instrument, is a yellow line. It's the collective command bar, which will direct the pilot to adjust the collective to follow the glide slope. Please note all these bars cease to provide information once you are past the runway's threshold. They are to be used during the approach to the runway, not the landing itself. Press spacebar to unpause and continue the mission. You should be almost intercepting the ILS beam. Turn the helicopter to the right, to a 66 degrees course. Good, now that you are following the ILS beam, let's contact air traffic control, to get clearance to land. The radio is already tuned, press the PTT key. On the communications menu, select F5, ATC, F2, Anderson Air Force Base, F1, inbound. Press spacebar once you are cleared for landing.
are near the destination, let's extend the landing light now. The control bindings needed to control the light, are shown on the figure. The landing light on advisory light, should illuminate when the landing light is in use. The SI command bars will direct you to descend following the glide slope, until the decision height is reached, at which point the pilot will be directed to level off. Manual navigation must be resumed at that point, to continue approach and landing. Touchdown. Reduce collective. Keep the helicopter within the runway, with small movements of the anti-torque pedals. Pull back a bit on the cyclic, to reduce speed. Enfield 1-1. Taxi to parking area. You have landed successfully. 
press spacebar to exit the training.